new real estate report from PwC says that amid the belief that rates will stay higher for longer, developers, investors, and owners are approaching all real estate with caution heading into 2024. And with the cost and scarcity of capital rising, the industry is holding back some development of new supply. For more on the report and the trends it uncovered, let's bring in Frank Magliocco, national real estate leader at PwC Canada. Frank, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, it's great to be back here again. So it, it sounds as though that scarcity of capital is at the top of the list there in terms of concerns. It was definitely one of our top three trends for sure, the scarcity of capital. And you know, while it's gonna create potentially some liquidity issues going forward in the next 12 to 24 months, I think uh, the other side, the flip side of that coin is that it's also creating some opportunities. Um, you know, we saw a number of people indicating that they're gonna take this moment in time to actually, you know, start some debt funds. And so, you know, while it's gonna be a challenge for some, there's also opportunities for others. Who do you think it would be the most challenging for? Is it a, a well, particular I, part of the, you know, the real estate sector or, or what do you think? Well, well, definitely. I think, you know, what we're seeing right now, you know, especially if you take a look at what's happened south of the border, you know, where we had the regional bank crises that we were having, a lot of liquidity has been taken out of the market. And so as commercial loans are being renegotiated, I think many are going to find it a lot more challenging than they have in the past. Now, if you're a big, well-capitalized, you know, long-term client, it's going to be still a little easier. But for others on renegotiating and refinancing certain commercial properties, especially in the office sector, people are going to find that it's going to be challenging. And similarly, with the number of the developers that are developing, you know, with that scarcity of capital, again, if you're a well-known large developer, less of an issue. Those that aren't are going to find it increasingly more difficult. Yeah, what, what are the expectations around the office sector more broadly uh, for the next year, Frank? Because that does seem to have a, a big question mark hanging over it. Yeah, we've been following this for some time, you know, especially with, you know, when COVID came and we keep talking about this mm -hmm. um, and people moved to this hybrid model. Um, there was there was some general apprehension assuming, you know, are we going to get back to normal? And, you know, I think in the past, the common view was that maybe we would get back to normal, but I think that's gone. I think many people realize that the hybrid model is definitely here to stay. And that is having an impact on, on the office sector. And you know what we heard from our interviewees when we talked to them um, through this report, you know, I think that office sector is one that is really challenged at this stage. Naturally, if you're a central business district, you know, well amenitized and you know, one of the trophy properties, you're gonna be less impacted. But as soon as you move outside of that area and even into the suburban areas, I think that's where the real challenges are going to be created with this office sector. So you mentioned remote work being a, a, a disruptive force, potentially, I said disruptive because you, you outlined the, the disruptors in the real estate market in your report as well. And maybe we can show some of those because I thought that was interesting. And that one of them is, is artificial intelligence and, and machine learning. How, how does that play a, a disruptive role in real estate? So I guess Gen AI, Gen AI is the new kid on the block. And yeah. you know, we've been talking about technology as a disruptor uh, in our report for a number of years, you know, from prop tech to construction tech. Um, and this year really was the first time that we really started to hear people talking about generative AI. And you know, I think it's quite early at this stage in terms of you know, where it's playing. So when we talk to our interviewees, there are some that actually said, you know, what exactly is it and how is it gonna be impacting real estate? Whereas others actually are starting to test use cases and are looking at ways how they can embed it in their, in their operations. And I think one thing that we heard uh, from the people that we interviewed is that, that this generative AI can really have a very profound impact uh, on, on real estate broadly. And again, we're starting to see it in many different use cases as people are looking and embarking this. It's early days for sure, but I think this is something that's gonna come really fast.
Hmm. OK, well, we'll have to check back in on that one. Um, I, I wonder what the stuff that we've heard from the federal government recently, uh, waiving the GST on rental housing being built, uh, but also in the fall economic statement, outlining more uh, loans available or funding available for for loans for for rental housing that won't the the uh, allotment of the 15 billion dollars isn't going to be available in, uh, until starting in, in 2025 um so it's not really looking ahead to next year it's looking ahead maybe to two years from now but how big of an impact do those sorts of efforts have do you think you know, I, I think every little bit helps, but I think the common view is that right now that's not enough. You know, we, the other key issue that we've had in our trends report for a number of years is just housing affordability. It's been uh, an issue that we've been dealing with uh, for some time. Um, and, you know, I think that initiatives like this are good, but there's still a lot of work to do. There's, there's, I think what came out of our report, there really are four levers to help drive these initiatives. And one that you're talking about right now is about government, government alignment uh, in terms of policy and regulation and being able to get capital out. You know, CMHC is a good example on where we can get that capital out in an efficient way to help build this purpose-built rental. I think it was CMHC that announced that we need, we need about three and a half million new homes yeah. to actually restore any sort of uh, affordability. And that's on top of the 2.3 million uh, that it's projected to produce by 2030. So those are pretty staggering amounts, especially when you think about in Canada, we only had 262,000 starts in 2022. So there's a lot of work ahead of us. But again, those types of initiatives are good. I think the verdict is out by many of the developers that we talked to talk to is whether that's the silver bullet. I think there's a whole bunch of levers because one that we don't talk enough about is also the labor side. Mm. So it's great if we can get the supply on, but if we don't have people to build it, it's going to be a real issue.